Now let's remember that the Ottomans were relatively impartial in their use of violence against the Ghassanids and all the other communities as well, to the point that between 1914 and 1918, during World War I, half of the population of, Le of Lebanon, of Mount Lebanon, died in hunger. Half of the population of Lebanon, 200,000 Lebanese starved to death because the Ottomans used that process in order to rule over them. Now, the excuses that they have given historically is because they had to do this to provide food for the Ottoman armies that were protecting them against the British and against the French imperialists who were coming here to invade. But in reality, that was not the reason. There was a pressure uh, under, uh, with the, uh, from the Muslim to, Christian, to, to Islamize Christian. It was, uh, you know, uh, uh, a sea of blood. And for what? You know, uh, we have a uh, very good picture here in, uh, in, in our uh, culture. Uh, there, were, there was a fight between the wind and the ocean. Uh, the, uh, only the boat suffered from that. <laughs> the ocean is not suffering, the wind is not suffering, the boat is. The, the, the boat is we, we are the boat suffering from this clashing between the wind and, and the ocean. The real reason was in order to control all of the principalities, including the Hassanids. Unfortunately, most of them were forced to leave their land and found refuge elsewhere. According to the books of Jeji Zaydan, the Ghassanid king left the Arab region when he slapped a commoner and refused to accept to be slapped back by him. The family played an important role in Lebanon by liberating the region from bad people. Sheikh Youssef El Shamour had a long hand in these acts of war. Defeating the corrupt people in the region beyond the borders of Byblos. A number of judges persecuted them in the region until Ottoman authority imposed a kind of open war against the sheikhs El Shamor. Then most traveled to the Americas, like Nicaragua, Brazil, and Mexico. One of the most important family members is the former president of Nicaragua, who's my father's cousin, Violeta Chamorro, and her husband, Pedro Chamorro, who is considered one of the most important judges in Nicaragua. Brazil has several family members, especially in Sao Paulo. As for Lebanon, the last of the famous person from the family El Shimor, especially the political field and public affairs, was my uncle, Sheikh Antonius El Shimor. And now, after him, his son, Sheikh Kali El Shimor who entered the political field during the days of the Prime Minister Hariri, and he's still following his political activities. As for the family of El Shamor, after the reign of the Patriarch Duai, this, a large and generous family, which came from the leaders, continued to represent Zagata Zawir in the political scene. And they were good men and women in the region. And they extracted the free water for the people, and their name is still there for water project of the El Chamor family.
Beit Shmer. The water. When uh, my father came from Nigeria, and this was like in the year 1947, 48, the area lacked of, of water. And uh, my father had some water. So when the, they came to him from the villages around Farhata and asking my father about how they can help, help them if he can find any way with the government, which he tried. And in fact, they, the government didn't do anything. So my father, he took the decision and he said, okay, fine. Now, if the government cannot do it, I will do it. And in fact, he, uh, he provided water for like something like 48 villages. And all, all was done from his own money, from his own effort. And uh, the, this, this water is still running till today. And people are still drinking of this water till today. Uh, although some of the houses they bought from the, from the government, which is funny to say that uh, with all these hap what's happening now and after the war uh, the water of the government is cut from time to time and it, it's not provided to the houses most of uh, most of the time in fact while my father's water is running 24 hours uh, all day all all year so yeah and people still remember my father because of that and it's nice it's a nice it's a nice feeling when when you go to these villages, and uh, although, I mean, this project has been done now for over 50 years, they still remind you that that's your father who is giving us the water, that the father who provided all the work for the, the, the uh, he made all the uh, underground to, 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 to bring all these, uh, you know, the pipes, the, you know, the whole, the whole, the whole nine yards. So, that's the, that's the water. You probably be shocked, but I honestly think that a title simply as a personal owner is absolutely useless in the 21st century. The reason why my family and I keep this tradition is because we believe uh, there is a contribution for the Middle East today. And in the whole Middle East, there is only one country where the president is Christian, uh, which is Lebanon. But while in other in other countries, uh, the Christians, I, I am not sure if they have, uh, you know, uh, their uh, all their uh, uh, rights as citizens, you know, in in the countries where they live, because we we have seen, I mean, in many countries, they do not have uh, congressmen, they do not have uh, MPs, they do not have representatives. I mean, in, in all means of, uh, of uh, government life. And I'm not talking about political power, but I'm talking about our duty. A prince has the duty of service to his people, no matter what. We might lose our privileges, but we didn't lose our duty. Look the history of my late cousin who lived in this palace. Uh, he felt that he had the obligation of helping his people, even no longer being in power. He could just have enjoyed his money, but no, he was committed to his position, to his duty of service to his people. At the end of his days, he had to go to, he had to do some dialysis like two to three times a week. And uh, when he knew that, in those days, the machines, you had like one or two machines in the big hospitals only. So he bought his own machine. And um, one day he was going to the American University to, to make his own dialysis. When a lady came to him, he, of course he didn't know her, and she came to him and she was begging to, uh, for help because her, she had an 18-year-old son who needed dialysis. And the, the hospital, they wouldn't take him because she had no money to pay. So my, my, the, my father's reaction was, okay, fine, so put him on my machine. And um, he called the director of the hospital and said, okay, fine, this is my machine. Uh, you don't have to, he doesn't have to pay for it. So put him on it. And when you finish, you call me. So in fact, after the guy, this, the young, this young gentleman finished his uh, dialysis, my father went to his own. And uh, 
the first thing that he did after he finished that he went up to the uh, to Babda, which is the presidential palace, and uh, the the president of the republic in those days it was uh, Samin Bek Franji, and he was a close friend of me. And my, my father told him the story, and he said, "Look, I mean, the, I would like to help. Now you are a president, and it's nicer if you can do it. Otherwise, you are going to force me to do it. And you have the Ministry of uh, uh, Health should take care of this problem, and dialysis should be done free in the hospital." And he promised him that. And in fact, the second day he called him and he said, all right, we gave all the instructions and all the hospitals will, will have dialysis machines and it will be done free for, for the whole Lebanese. And it's, uh, it's rewarding. I mean, when you hear that your father could help in doing things like this, it's rewarding. The Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius may be considered one of the greatest rulers of all times. And he hired a servant to the sole task of walking behind him as he received the accolades from the citizenry. Even when the emperor was praised, the servant had been instructed to whisper in his ear, you're just a man. Even being the most powerful man on the planet, in his time, he was known as a kind and unpretentious person. This is the real kind of royal, the real kind of noble. As for cultural activity, my late brother, Sheikh Nasif El Shimor, tended to collect ancient books, newspapers, and manuscripts since the 1960s. His house was a library in every sense of the word. Many intellectuals, such as Dr. Mohammed Qasem and Mr. Antoine Al Kawal, the poet, writer, and artist, Mr. Mohsen Yamin, and so many different intellectuals. Even the former captain of the Bar Association, René Gantous, almost continuously frequented the Sheikh Nassif's office. He had a passion for helping all college students. Even the doctors in the Lebanese, Jesuit, and American universities were sending their students to Sheikh Nassif to help them provide the necessary raw materials for their lectures. At the same time, they took the books from him without returning them. There are about 3,000 books or more, no longer to Sheikh Nassif's library, which are very valuable. He was a unique phenomenon in the sum of vigor, generosity, and culture. The love of giving without any compensation and the political ideology of tranquility. It was known that he loved a certain political figure in the region. It was Minister Frangi. He had a weakness towards him. Even though I tender to a different political position. But I found that he was right to many things with his political and distinct political and even his great consideration about all problems. He had no grudges on anyone. And even those who hated him, he reciprocated them with forgiveness and indulgence. He had this nobility in every sense of the word. He was very interested in collecting many things about the family from the sheikhs El Shamor. He had many manuscripts, some of which were received by the royal house. There are also many ancient manuscripts that are related to the dispute between the families of the sheikhs El Shamor and the sheikhs 
al Dahir. and to the alliance with the al Hassan family in Betraych to help them to fight the sheikhs el Shamor. <laughs> this is all what I can say about Sheikh Nasif and the family el Shamor in Lebanon.